What's up, everybody? We got a bunch of mead, and we have Paul, who is a mead aficionado and excellent mead maker. He's going to help me. We're not going to get to all of all of these, but we'll give them a try. They come from Barry in New Jersey, not Barry in Milwaukee. Another Barry. Uh, Barry in New Jersey was very generous to send all this stuff. He also sent some really yummy beer that I already drank and took some notes on and gave feedback to him on the, you know, I don't have the leverage here. We're going to, we're going to get into a, a real problem here. Okay. I got the, the, the thing out. All right. So what we got first is Mel Mel 15% alcohol, clover honey with 20 pounds of mixed berries, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. And you do, do the triple berry, claw berry, stuff like that. Yeah, that would be just the triple berry mix. I think you could buy. Oh, it smells really good. It smells really rich and fruity. Yeah, it's got a big honey nose. Oh, you're getting the honey? Mm-hmm. Smells rich. I mean, that's has a lot of fruit flavor. Wow. Well, I might need a little bit more. I even though I said like we weren't gonna have a lot of it, but yeah, for fifteen percent, it's very smooth. It has a what I like, and I know how you do it. It has a a sweetness there. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not dry, but it's not overly sweet, and it has a really rich fruit character. But that is a lot of fruit too. Twenty pounds. Yeah. Very nice. Um, seems I don't detect anything off about it. Um, get it? I get some honey flavor, but yeah, big berry. Mm -hmm. Everything uh, seems big to be, berry character. Seems to be a nice balanced mead. Yeah, it's not hot or boozy. Or and as we always discuss with meads and ciders, when you are often sweetening them, the level to which you would sweeten is going to be up to. Mm -hmm. The Every taste. person's going to have their own sweet spot. I think this definitely has a, a nice amount of sweetness. Mm -hmm. uh, I like where you took it. Yeah. I like. If I had to I guess, I kind of like a little bit of sweetness, so I could possibly. What would you guess, just for fun? For the gravity. Yeah. Um. So mine was like by back swing to like ten twenty five. I feel like it maybe was a tiny bit sweeter than this. So, under that. I would guess. I'm gonna 10, guess 20. like 10, 10, 23 or so. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can, maybe he'll tell us <laughs> at some point. Oh, well that, he said we could send him a question, oh. so I could try that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna pause and enjoy the rest of this and uh, get to the next one. Well done. All right, did we have any follow up on the first one that we found out from, oh, the gravity thing. Yeah. He was guessing that he, so I point to here because I'm chatting with him. He said I could ping him with any questions during this time. So that's been kind of fun. He thinks he back it to like 10, 15 was his uh, recollection. But the next one is a traditional mead that he made three gallons and then he took three quarts. So almost one gallon out of the batch to use, I think in this one, then he put roughly three quarts of tart cherry juice and pomegranate juice and then it went through a secondary fermentation mm -hmm. and we have 13 percent alcohol mead here and this one we were saying is a slightly drier than the first one the fruit character is is different because it didn't have actual fruit you know 20 pounds of fruit in there but it's present. I mean, I definitely can get some of the cherry. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what pomegranate... I think I've said this before. It's in meads, beers, beverages sometimes, but I don't actually know what it tastes like. Do you? Uh, it's kind of berry, citrusy. I mean, I've had pomegranate where you break all the seeds out. You have? I've had okay. it. It's been so long I can't recall. <laughs> 
But like we said on the first one, clean fermentation, no hot alcohols, no off flavors, has a nice balance between a little bit of acidity, fruit character, sweetness. Yeah, it's a nice drinking. Yeah, super flavor. super smooth. I would say this is more like an off dry, approaching semi sweet. Or the other one I would say was like semi sweet to maybe medium sweet. Um, yeah, very very crushable. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of hard to believe nice. it would be thirteen percent. I mean, it's so smooth and although I don't really get any legs off it. I wonder maybe if that maybe got diluted down with the well, juice. Well, I was just gonna say. That's unless he accounted for that. Yeah. That's a that's a level of calculation that I yeah. <laughs> I, I just say oh this cider was eight percent and then yes I did you know add yeah. some fruit to it or or whatever but it, it does affect I'm, it affects it somehow. Either way, it's super tasty. Yeah. Well done. Um, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. <laughs> there you go, and he he would know so. All right, well, we'll finish this up and get to the fig. Get to the fig, yep. Yeah. On to the last home-brewed mead. This is a commercial one that he sent, and we'll see if we get to that. This one is called Tempered Decadence. You know, that's a good name. I don't know how tempered it is, though. It's pretty mm -hmm. decadent. Uh, Avocado blossom and wildflower honey with 18.5 pounds total of dried figs and dates. And Paul was saying, that's yeah, a lot of dried yeah. fruit. Because you don't have the water weight. Yeah, dried fruit's more intense. And I don't know what your batch size was, but... We'll assume... That's a lot. I was like, wow. Five gallons. But this one, just like the others, is really yummy. It's this one. It, the name is very fitting. It is decadent. Yes. It is a well, sweet dessert mead. He says, I used 18 pounds of dried fruit total, hence the sweetness. I was only able to temper it as a bit as a beginning mead maker. Only started this past January. How about that? Oh. And it's November. So he hasn't even been making meads a year. At all. You know, the other thing is, is a lot of times in the olden days, we would make mead and we wouldn't even drink it for a year. But these are all obviously less than a year old. Yeah. This one is, um, it is sweeter, and he made it less sweet than it was originally by taking the three quarts of, wildflower tray. of the wildflower traditional, Blended. which presumably wasn't overly sweet, yeah. and putting it in this fig and date one. You can get the figs and the dates in mm -hmm. this, I think. Yeah, I get both. I think you can even smell it. Mm -hmm. You get the... It's rich. I mean, this is a sweet dessert mead. Mm. You know, it is a glass about that big would be perfect after... End of the evening, mm -hmm. after a meal. Yeah, it's a sipper. It's a viscous. It's a thick. Yeah. There's probably a high final gravity, I would imagine. It reminds me of like a ice wine or a ice whatever what have you i don't know if i've had like ice ciders but something that's just a really thick rich sweet mm -hmm. and you do really get the figs and the dates i would never mm -hmm. would think to They're use yummy. those super good have you ever had meads with those Is Some. that something people Some. make yeah yeah oh, okay yep yeah. people use them we use the avocado blossom which i believe is a darker honey and well, this would get color from the fruit for oh, sure, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Quite a bit. Yep. But that's a darker honey, too. I think he said he mm -hmm. used wildflower with it. Yeah. So it's a blend of two honeys. Man, oh, man. Yeah, you're doing very well. <laughs> Obviously, you've done your homework. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I didn't comment, but the beers he sent were English barley wine, quad, and a imperial brown porter or something like that. And some of them had different, like the quad had different kinds of sugars, Belgian sugars. One of them had some cacao nibs, vanilla. That was the porter. That thing was really good. They were all very good beers, too. That's my point. They were all really well done and kind of big beers. So everything he makes is big. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> no they, session here. So they do it in Jersey, I guess. <laughs> Don't yeah. mess around. Not goofing around. No, this one is. Yep. This is a. It's dessert for sure. Yeah, it's it's amazing since. Uh, Sergio came up with Tazna, which I think you mentioned already that he's mm -hmm. using Tazna. That the level of meads that come out with new mead makers versus the olden days, and just all the education that's out there for mead makers nowadays, you can come out of the gates and have these kinds of meads. Right. And a right. few months. And very yeah, simple. these would have been, I made my first mead in probably like 2000, 2001, and I was, I waited a year, I think, for it to get, you know, kind of a little bit better, and I think I did back sweetening. I didn't really know what I was doing. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, information, and it wasn't for many years that I made a mead that I was more happy with, and only after hanging out with you and all your mead making, then a couple years ago, like 2017, I made my first fruit mead that I was really, really happy with. And, um, but yeah, this, that, that's, I've been brewing for 15 plus years by then. And so this is to come out of the gates, making these meads is and not only is it impressive, but I think it could be encouraging for anybody that wants to think about trying to make mead. Oh yeah. Do your homework. I mean, yeah, you can find some, the information. There's, there's some great books out there now. There's tons of information. There's forums. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. lots, lots I bet of there's even YouTube videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> I did one yeah. for my low level uh, first humble attempt but uh, all right so excellent job Barry on your beers and your meads should we go ahead and take a crack at the sure. commercial one Why not? okay speaking of dumb videos we have a commercial mead that we have gotten into it is called with the baseball bat Honey grape blackberry peanut wine is what it says. Misbehaving meads. Oh. All right. Produced and bottled by Miss B. Behaven. See what they did there, honey. Miss Behaven. Be bees. Yes, Behaven. Uh, does that say Indiana? Valparaiso. Uh, right there. Oh yeah, Indiana. Maybe we'll... So, I poured a little bit into my glass and took a smell and went, ugh, because I just got come off of more straightforward, and these are very fruit flavored, and this was sweet with a little bit of the fig and date aroma. And this one, I was just getting like this dirty aroma that I thought was bad. But now I know it's a peanut butter and jelly, jelly mead. type mead. Yeah. Hence the, what, blackberry, grape, and uh, peanut characteristic on there. And Paul here tells me that that's a thing that people oh, yeah. do. Yeah. I was unaware of that. Yep. A few years ago, it was like the new thing and everybody was making them. And I think they go about making them a couple different ways. I think they, they boil the peanuts. Hmm. Then use the water after you skim the fat off. Or okay. I think some people uh, use the powder, the peanut powder, like the PB2. They'll use that. I mean, there's different ways to make it. It has a <clears throat> it has a reasonable fruit character. It's mm -hmm. a little bit sweet, um, and then the peanuts. Yeah. That's peanuts. what I was reacting to with the aroma, and I, I just didn't know what I was smelling. But you get a little bit of the peanut taste, I mm -hmm. think. Um, it's fun to try. I, it's just a real unique niche kind of thing. Yeah. Niche. You know, I mean, like some people would probably make this at home. I would probably not be the, one of those people. But I, it's fun to try. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it has a level of sweetness that I like. You know, it is not overly dry or 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 too sweet either. Uh, so thank you for sending that, and also the can of beer you sent that was a big stout, I believe, was very good. I don't know if I commented, Barry. Thank you for sending that. Thank you for sending all of this stuff, and this will be 
I don't know if you how much more you want right now, but um, you could have a little more. Otherwise, uh, I'll be in, enjoying it. Hopefully, I'll get to share it with a couple more people. I know they've been open, but they should be okay for oh, yeah. a little while. Get it back in the fridge. But yeah, thank you very much. Excellent job, and I've been chatting with you during this uh, tasting, so that's kind of fun too. Yeah. And uh, everyone else, thanks for watching, and catch you later. See ya.